scrumptious carrot cake without the cream cheese icing. <laughs> Is a hot fudge sundae really a sundae without the finishing touch of the cherry on top? What is a speech without a powerful conclusion? Toastmasters and guests, today we're going to talk about the finishing touch to your speech, the icing on the cake, your conclusion. The last thing you want is to invest time in creating a wonderful speech only to have it fall flat at the end. We have a great presentation from the Better Speaker Series today, where we will learn criteria for successful conclusions, techniques we can use to create a great conclusion, and tips for success. <coughs> Let's learn more about putting the icing on the cake of your speech in a conclusion that supports the body of the speech, leaves your audience satisfied, and makes your message very clear. What are some criteria we can apply to create a successful conclusion? Your conclusion is the part of the speech where you recap your points and summarize them to give your audience a sense of closure. They don't want to feel like your speech stopped suddenly. and forgot to wrap things up. How can you keep your audience with you and give them that sense of closure? Use closing signals. Closing signals are vocal signals that will alert your audience to perk up and listen because your closing words are coming soon. Try using these closing signals in your next speech. In conclusion, in closing, as I finish, let me end by saying, or to summarize, how do these closing signals really work? Think about it. When you are reading something, you know that you're nearing the end of the article or chapter because you see the bottom of the page. But when you're speaking and an audience is listening, there is no visual cue. There is no end of the page. Try using to summarize to alert them to get ready for your awesome conclusion. Make an impact. Have you ever heard that the last thing someone hears is what they remember the longest? Makes sense, doesn't it? This is why your conclusion is so important. Let's say you're giving a demonstration speech, much like Marilyn Brown's speech about the Dis personality. This type of speech has a great opportunity to have an impactful conclusion. You could end with the four personality types, D, I, F, C, and all of the attributes that makes up each type. This could be impacting your audience for days if you end with a question, which personality type do you most identify with? I know as one of the few C's in the room, I've been overanalyzing Marilyn's topic ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that you could use for your conclusion to make an impact is persuasion. When I'm speaking at one of our fundraisers about the challenges of Tourette syndrome, I use persuasion. Impact is measured by how people feel when you finish your speech. Your conclusion can be memorable if you deliver it in a thought-provoking, impactful, and meaningful way. Your conclusion should take no more than five to 10% of your entire speech time. In a typical Toastmaster speech that we give that's five to seven minutes, that's 21 to 42 seconds. Let's demonstrate how long that time really is. When I give the signal, Yobel is going to time 21 seconds for us. 21 seconds may sound like a short amount of time, but in reality, it will give you the opportunity to wrap up your speech with a conclusion that makes an impact on your audience and gives them that sense of closure. Remember, the most time that you should be spending in your speech is on the body of your speech, time. where you're breaking new ground <laughs> or making new points. See, that gave me time to give you two fairly long sentences that could be the length of a conclusion. So it really is long enough. 
But if you need to use the 42 seconds, go right ahead. Thank you. Are you ready to learn some techniques for closing your speech powerfully? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend you take notes so that you can try one of these conclusions in your next speech. The first technique is to use a quotation to end your speech. A quotation can add authority, amuse your listeners, or add drama to your speech. The quote should be short, and it should be relevant to the topic of your speech. Let's say you're giving a presentation to encourage other people to be concerned about the future of our environment. You may wish to end with George Bernard Shaw's words, some men look at things as they are and ask why. I dare to dream of things as they never were and ask why not. It adds drama, it adds authority, it may add goosebumps. Let's see, how would you amuse your listeners with a quote? Let's say you're doing a speech about your bucket list. I have a friend named Deborah Sharp, and she made a bucket list of all of the things she wanted to do once she turned 50. Skydiving was on her bucket list. Maybe it's on yours. You could end your speech with a quote by the late comedian Henny Youngman, who said, if at first you don't succeed, so much for skydiving. <laughs> a short story or anecdote. Develop the story quickly, make it quick, and make sure it reinforces your message. You want to make it personal too, if you can. It could be inspirational, or it could be funny. Yobel Montesino gave a speech called Leader or Manager. Yobel's closing words tied in beautifully with the message of his speech about leadership. He explained that in the Marines, he was part of a unit called the Wolf Pack. He shared the motto of the group, which was, the strength of the wolf is in the pack, but the strength of the pack is in the wolf. It was quick, personal, thought-provoking, and impactful. Try the call for action closing in your next speech. If you want to gain alliance, votes, support, or create change, the call to action conclusion is great because it makes people think you are giving them actionable steps to urge them to do something after you finish your speech. Stacy Cohen gave a speech called Eat Your Vegetables. She gave us some very actionable steps, including don't put potato chips in your pantry, pack your lunch, cook healthy on Sunday night so that you can eat healthy the rest of the week. Her last statement was, if we want to feel good and live long enough to meet our great-grandchildren, we just need to eat more vegetables. A great call to action closing with very actionable steps and a little bit of persuasion thrown in. Bring on the broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> the next technique is asking a rhetorical question. For those of you, like me, who want to be sure you know what a rhetorical question is, it's when you ask a question with the intent of producing an effect or making a statement, not actually extracting an answer. In this example, you may ask, can we afford to do this? I ask, can we afford not to? A rhetorical question makes your audience answer that question in their head. Brian Micus ended with a rhetorical closing for his speech, My Old Friend Adversity. His last line was, I know what I'm capable of. I know how to win, and I know how to overcome adversity. Do you? Great use of the rhetorical question ended. Refer to the beginning of the speech. I like to call this bringing your speech full circle. You make a point, you give your speech, and then you end with a point that refers back to it. This example talks about, I begin my remarks by reviewing the challenges our company must confront. Presumably, the conclusion would then move on to challenge the employees to look at those challenges as opportunities. Bruce Goldfarb gave a speech about his growth as an officer in Toastmasters. He began with, be true to your club. He gave the speech and finished with, be true to your club. Yenny used the same technique in her speech, Coffee Traditions, where she began and ended her speech with the Colombian coffee slogan, 
let's get some Tinto and become friends. A great way to bring her speech full circle because it emphasizes the beginning, it emphasizes the end, and makes your speech memorable. The last technique today is to summarize your main points. We've heard it, tell your speech. Tell them what you're gonna tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. The tell them what you told them part is the summary. We have a master in our club who does this. Okay, I'll tell you, it's Garfield. In his speech, The Frog and the Scorpion, the difference between a dream and a goal, perceptions, and even today, he did a wonderful job of taking the points from the body and finishing in the summary. This is one of the most effective types of closings. Why? Repetition. Your audience will remember your points. Toastmasters, we've talked about criteria for success and some techniques you can use. Let's hear some more tips to help you put the icing on the cake of your speech. Memorize your conclusion. Absolutely do this. Say it into your phone record. Say it in front of your mirror. Say it in front of your family until they are sick of it. <laughs> End your speech confidently and sound polished by memorizing your conclusion. Please end your speech on time. Practice and practice until you know, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that you will not be clapped off of the stage. If you don't have time to reach your conclusion, your audience will be disappointed and they will feel cheated. Not to mention, you'll be upset with yourself. They will not achieve that sense of closure. Refrain from adding new points in your conclusion. We may have all been tempted to do this. We're giving our speech, it's going great. We feel a vibe from the audience. We're like, if I just make that one point one more time, a little bit different way, I'll stick it in the conclusion and really drive my point home. Or worse, you forget one of the main topics in the body of your speech. <coughs> and you try to add it in the conclusion. Don't do this. <laughs> you'll go over time, you'll forget your memorized conclusion, and you'll be scrambling for words. You'll leave your audience confused, and you'll have a weak conclusion. Sometimes, a very dynamic speech can be less effective because of a poor closing. To summarize, did you catch that? That was your closing signal. <laughs> <laughs> to summarize, your conclusion is a very important finishing touch on your speech. Today we've talked about criteria for success, tips, and techniques that you can use to create a conclusion that supports the body of your speech, makes an impact, and gives your audience a sense of closure. You've worked so hard on writing your speech, working on the flow, working on the body language, the vocal variety, and the pacing. Don't risk leaving your audience with a less than favorable impression Give your conclusion the attention it deserves. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow says, great is the art of beginning, but greater is the art of ending. I say, great is the art of putting the icing on the cake. <laughs> <laughs>